Hello, and uh, welcome to another Veg Fund Live Social. Um, today, we're going to be featuring Nigel Wright Brown and Sam Clausen, founders of Maryland Vegan Restaurant Week, which asks restaurants to promote healthier menus with whole food, plant based items that can benefit your health, reduce animal cruelty, and save the environment. Um, I'm Patrick Liddy, I'm a digital marketing specialist here at Veg Fund, and I'm here. I'm going to be here with Estella Ramirez, our communications associate, and she actually just wrote a uh, fantastic activist story featuring Maryland Vegan Restaurant Week. Um, I'm going to add that to the chat below so you can check that out. It's going to kind of summarize. We're, we're going to talk a lot about it here today, but this is going to that post kind of summarizes you know the main points about uh, Najee and Sam's story. So we'll share that. You can check that out. I just want to see real quick um, where you're all watching from. I'm here in uh, Portland, Maine. So it'd be, it'd be great to hear where you're all from. Um, and before we bring Nigel and Sam in uh, to share their story, I just want to introduce Veg Fund and you know, share a little bit about what we do. So Veg Fund empowers vegan and plant-based advocates worldwide through grant funding and supporting effective vegan outreach that inspires people to choose and maintain a vegan lifestyle. And we've been doing that since 2009. So we've been around quite a while. Um, and so a few of our grant categories are community events, which encompass food sampling, film screenings, pay-per-view, festivals, fairs, learning events. Um, we have special project, projects grant category, which um, sort of encompasses a lot of different things. Like if you have something creative, uh, it could be a mentor campaign, vegan challenges, humane education, uh, school outreach, and, you know, many more things. So we're willing to hear you out on that. And we also have uh, online campaigns where you, if you have a social media campaign going or a paid social campaign or an online challenge or digital marketing campaign, then um, definitely feel free to apply to that. Um, and if you have any questions um, for any of us, for Nigel and Sam or myself or Estella, please feel free to write them in the chat. Um, I'm just going to introduce uh, Nigel and Sam right now. Um, Nigel is a multi, multiple time Veg Fund grantee. Um, she's really a rock star over here, so uh, we're really happy to have her. Um, she's owner of Land of Kush, executive director of Black Veg Society, and co founder and co organizer of Vegan Soul Fest, just to name a few of her many endeavors. And Sam is the owner of Golden West Cafe, an eclectic restaurant that served Southwestern food in Baltimore for the last two decades. And without any further ado, I'm going to add everybody to the stream. Hi. Hey, Hi. welcome. <laughs> Fantastic. Welcome, Thanks welcome. Having us. Yeah, so. Um, I had the pleasure of writing this story about uh, your endeavor, your exciting project. And I love this story because it's one of those uh, win, 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 maybe another win <laughs> uh, situations that you've created. And I can't wait for everyone to hear about it. Um, why don't we start with just in case there's anyone watching who doesn't know what um, a vegan restaurant week is or isn't familiar with Maryland Vegan Restaurant Week. Um, can you tell us what it is, uh, how it works? And uh, we'll start from there and, and take it take it uh, where it goes. Well, I, I always like to start with Sam because if it wasn't for me walking into Sam's restaurant, Golden West, a um, non-vegan but veg-friendly restaurant, vegan week you know probably wouldn't exist so i was on a journey to find the next best project i had just been discriminated against in a restaurant in baltimore and i just happened to be in this veg friendly restaurant golden west and they were having a vegan week so i was totally confuzzled as my daughter would say <laughs> <laughs> just like a wonderful serendipitous lightning strike. Um, you know, Naja came in, she dined, we were having vegan week. Um, we had decided, you know, some time ago, um, like you had said in the intro, our restaurant's been around for a long time. Um, and we had always had, you know, like a dish or two that was vegan, some vegetarian options. And like most restaurants, 
you know, you could modify what we had if you took things off or had without, you know. Um, and so we started to really shift our perspective um, in around uh, 2010, um, where we were like really just phasing out a lot of things that sort of by default included animal products, you know, to make our food more accessible and more versatile so that you could really choose what was on our menu and it could be easily interchanged. You know, it could be vegan, vegetarian, or, you know, have more conventional protein options. Um, and so 2012 came around and we were like, we're going to do a vegan week. Um, most of our specials had always been like meat heavy. And I was just like, well, it's time to represent the other side of the coin. Um, we're going to go ahead and try this out. And it was just like a, a big deal. <laughs> the response was so huge. We were like, oh, these people are hungry. Like, let's, let's make sure that we are consistently providing space for people on our menu um, and in our restaurant. And so that's kind of how it started. Um, years later, Nausea comes in. She sent us an email that was like, y'all are crazy. Like, let's work together. <laughs> so, <laughs> <the> rest- <laughs> you know, I haven't been, my first experience at Golden West, Sam wasn't the owner. So I'm just coming into Baltimore in 2005. Um, so Lana Kush isn't open yet. And I'm starting my vegan journey. This was one of the places I went to, and I think they had like a barbecue tofu dish. And then that was the last time I had been to Golden West. So fast forward five years later, which would be in 2017 around that time. So we Vegan Sofa started in 2014. I'm looking for something else to do. So by 2017, I'm back at Golden West, which is now owned by Sam. And they're having this vegan week. And then they have all these dishes. I'm like, wait a minute, what just happened here? <laughs> I have got the dog for the owner. <laughs> and so as soon as Nasra reached out, I was so excited because we had been doing it for a few years by then. And I had always kind of hoped that other restaurants would be interested or reach out, but none of them did until this magical human being came into the restaurant. And then we were like, hey, let's meet. We talked hit it off right away and then took it citywide, you know, and it's been growing every time we do it, you know, ever since um, we've had more and more participation. Um, a lot of, you know, I would consider us Omni restaurants um, that serve, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, a lot of Omni restaurants have been joining on, which I feel like really is a big, you know, signal uh, for the entire world, right? Or with the direction of where food is going, uh, the future of food. And so it's it's been wonderful. Yeah, you've tapped into a, a demand, uh, uh, you know, with with the growing vegan movement. Um, as you mentioned, there are people who maybe aren't vegan, but they want to be able to experiment and try. And you've really tapped into that demand. It's great for the movement. Um, you have this magical partnership. Uh, and, and that's one of the, the secrets that we focus on in the story is that it hinges on this great partnership of yours. You have great chemistry. Um, how did you, or how do you think that your particular partnership or, or what qualities in any partnership really help, uh, create a movement like this? That's, that's as successful as yours. Estella, Patrick, you're not going to believe this. It's all about the numbers. Numbers don't lie. I am into <laughs> astro numerology. I'm a number five. Oh. Sam is a number five. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. So chemistry is just, you know, my numbers in numerology are five, six, three. So anyone with those numbers, I'm going to resonate and have synergy with. And me and Sam, I, I don't know Sam. Sam is a stranger to me <laughs> before all this happened. And we just hit it off like we knew each other for years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's wow. really wonderful. I think that we both respect the work that one another does and what we kind of bring to this partnership and how we work together with people. I think that we're both like trying to always find um, new team members, new people to collaborate with. You know, what's next? What are we doing? And and also at the same time, like working together, bringing people in and leaving space for one another to do say, bring whatever, you know, is within them. And I think that's kind of like how it stays magical and keeps moving forward, you know, is like staying focused, respecting one another and just working really hard to get it done. 
Yeah. I love collaborations. Collaborations are key to me. And, you know, as I mentioned with Vegan SoFest and collaborating with uh, Brenda Sanders of Afro Vegan Society, who also at that time was a stranger to me, but uh, I had met her at a happy hour that Land of Kush was throwing. And it's just the synergy. I'm a collaboration person. We just have to have that synergy. We have to share the same mission. Um, you know, I, I think I'm easy to get along with. I can get along with people that don't like me as long as we have a shared mission and we understand this is the goal, we can still achieve it. I don't let that type of stuff bother me. And um, it, it works. Uh, any of the projects that Veg Fund can look at, you know, because you get the reports. A lot of it are collaborative projects, right? <laughs> Except for not just speaks. But I still need to work with people on that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And not everyone's going to have their, their magic numbers line up as yours did. <laughs> but, but what our audience can can learn is what you just said, that that even if you, the chemistry isn't there, if you have a shared mission, you can make it work. And, and that brings me to like how you got started with, with Vegan Restaurant Week. Um, it involves, you tell us a little bit, and by the way, as I ask questions, feel free to jump in and tag team, both of you answer, um, but like, what are the nuts and bolts of how it works, uh, how restaurants join, how you, how you maybe uh, reach out to them? You mentioned emailing Sam um, right off the bat, but how do you reach out to them and how do you get them excited to join? And then, and once they join, well, how does it, how does it all work for, for the restaurants who participate and for the, for the restaurant goers? Wow. <laughs> um, it is definitely work uh, because you have, with the vegan restaurant, sometimes uh, there's a reluctance because it's, it's feel a feel of competition. Okay. You're bringing, you know, these folks on and not vegan and not wanting to spread vegan. I don't eat Atlanta Kush all the time. I don't. People tend to think that. I'm all over the city. I'm all over the state eating. I want plant-based options. Baltimore City alone, 27% of the population uh, wants vegan and vegetarian, vegetarian food. So there is enough for everyone just in this city alone. So the opportunity is there. You just have to get plant-based options on the plate. Um, and Sam, if you, you want to add to that, it is legwork. It is building relationships with restaurants. I have a lot of relationships with restaurants in the city of Baltimore, and we built more relationships with restaurants based on this campaign because we're all in this together. Big, small, medium, chain. You know, we all share the same mission. It's just we need to give more plant based options on the menu because that's what the market is looking for. Sam? Absolutely. Uh, we are, you know, as restaurateurs, we <laughs> we have a bond. We know how hard this job is, how hard this business is, um, and all of the things that come along with it. And so, you know, for me personally, it's like I want to see restaurants do well. I want to see them succeed. You know, we are very fortunate um, in Baltimore, uh, like a lot of places. You know, you have. Uh, a lot of small independent businesses. These are people's lives and dreams, you know? And so for us, we're like, how can we help you? You know, how can we help you? And this is something that is so wonderful and easy to do um, and brings people together, right? Because like there's a lot of power in bringing people together to eat. And being able to share what we've learned over the years about plant-based eating um, I mean, I turned vegan like three years ago uh, because of it. But like being yes. able to uh, being able to share being able to share that with other restaurateurs that may just not know, you know, uh, the types of foods that are out there, like the level and quality of uh, plant based options that you can easily switch out with whatever you're doing. It's so accessible to us now. Um, being able to do that really like that puts a lot of like heart into our work, right? So we're just like constant outreach we're trying to make connections talk to restaurants um we have a, an amazing team um destiny de jesus uh who is part of veggie mijas she's like an amazing social media manager she is just like our rock and she helps us reach out to restaurants um jen yarmus she does a lot of outreach um she will reach out to people through dms we send emails you know constant contact and then like naja is always pounding the pavement she's like you know she's like checking out their snacks and then she's like hey you should join this thing so 
we're always <laughs> trying to, to network and talk to people and like lean on our, our friends in the biz and be like, hey, this thing, we're doing this, join us this time. It's it's gonna be great. And, it's, and it is. <laughs> so we've got a lot of success in that way. Um, we do not function like traditional restaurant weeks. Um, you know, if in traditional restaurant week, you might have like two weeks, 10 to 14 days of, you know, like a pre-fee where they do like fancy places are trying to entice, you know, the general public to come and dine there on their sort of off season. But for us, we're like, no, no, <laughs> we're going to do the first Friday of either February or August, because those are the prime times for us to, to do this. Um, we do the first Friday through the last Sunday. Um, this gives diners the time that they've been asking for uh, because vegans and plant-based people are like super dedicated and they want to hit all of the spots. That's really one week they, isn't enough. One week, week is just enough. isn't enough. <laughs> no, it's not enough. You cannot eat enough meals um, in that. In those <laughs> days. So we spread it out over a few weeks um, and we just have people to participate in any way that they are comfortable. We ask them to have specials. You know, they don't have to be discounted. They just have to be plant-based. Um, and it can be entrees, appetizers, whatever, as long as they have offerings that are, you know, clearly labeled, we tell them, um, we work with a lot of Omni restaurants. So we really go over sort of like, Hey, make sure that this isn't, you know, cross contamination, honey right. is not vegan, mm -hmm. margarine is not vegan mm -hmm. <laughs> to like pay attention to labels and be cautious and conscientious and, uh, you know, they ask us for recommendations. They ask us for assistance. We try to put them in contact with a lot of small purveyors in our area um, or prime, prime vendors that might be in the area that have the supplies that they need of plant-based, you know, cheeses in bulk, wholesale, whatever. Um, and then, you know, and then we wait. <laughs> we, 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 we mark it as much as possible and then mm -hmm. see how it's going over weeks and, um, and interact with guests as much as possible via social media uh, to try to see how they are liking and experiencing vegan week. Um, and that's that's kind of it. We're just wrapping it up. It's fun right time. Now. Yeah, it's time for voting. It's time for yeah. voting. So we have folks cast a vote. That's how we get the surveys and the feedback to, to be able to share um, how impactful it was and, 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 and if anyone had any uh, suggestions. We also send it to restaurants as well so we can get an idea of how they felt about um, the the campaign. It's a fun time. I mean, you know, I'm sorry that, that it ended Sunday and I can't wait for it to get back in the winter. <laughs> so um, it is work and, and you have to really love this work because it's making connections, it's um, facing rejection, um, mm -hmm. understanding businesses, uh, restaurant business, especially during this time, we're in a sensitive time uh, COVID is out there. The pandemic is out there. Everyone isn't going out. Some people are ordering, you know, so just making it accessible for folks. So we, we just try to accommodate uh, and still make it as as fun and uh, flexible as we possibly can. Yeah. I just want to stop and, and note that Alicia loves our kitties, Naja and, and myself. We have kittens <laughs> running around in the background. <laughs> Uh, and we have an interesting question we'll get to soon, but I just want to wrap up what, what I'm hearing from what you say is that part of your success is that networking and building a great team, building great partnerships. Uh, but also I heard you say that it's important to support those perhaps omni restaurants or restaurants wanting to try to be omni um, and, and supporting them and, and offering um, some easy ways to transition that that isn't so scary to them and, and making it clear that that it's it's to their benefit that it, it can go uh, their own um, patronage right they can it can actually help them succeed um, so I love I love what I'm hearing um, we have a question here that was up earlier from Peter about including uh, restaurant menu items for, it seems like themed on, let's read this. Uh, as a farming researcher, I am trying to develop a veganic agroforestry alley cropping farming system. I want to start vegan tree crop Wednesdays. So this vegan tree crop Wednesdays theme to promote sustainable tree crops without domesticated animals. What do you think of a restaurant menu for those days? 
Wow, that's, that's, that's a good one. That's a good question, Peter. Thank you for that. Um, I mean, do I understand what type of vegetable or produce is being um, grown here, organic agroforestry? I would need to know that part and if we can use it as a recipe or in our for our menu. My, my husband, Greg, is the executive chef, so we would need to know that first. Sam? Yeah. Oh, I it's just really quick. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Peter, <laughs> just add that to the comments uh, if you're hearing this. Sorry, go ahead, Sam. Oh, uh, yes. I was going to say essentially the same thing. That, but also, you know, it's good to know, like, what the list is and sort of what that means, you know, without using animals. Um, but at the same time, vegetables are pretty easy to incorporate into menus, you know, across the board. So it's just connecting restaurants with those farmers, you know, so that you can perpetuate more of this organic uh, agroforestry. Um, that is something that Naja and I are actually working on. Um, we are, you know, we donate to nonprofits at the end of our at the end of our vegan week cycle. Um, one of the places that we're actually donating to is called Bliss Meadows. Um, and what that is is that um, a young lady named uh, Atia Wells bought 10 acres uh, as sort of like a, a reclamation project. She took vacant properties um, in inner city Baltimore um, and is reconnecting inner city people and inner city communities to the land. Um, and to farming their own food, um, sustainability, you know? So uh, that is something that for us, we really want to work with small farmers and people that are doing things like this and connect those folks to restaurants so that we can sort of perpetuate, help grow, support one another um, in a way that, are, you know, is sustainable and, and fair. And Peter, Peter, I'll definitely connect with you in, in the veg fund comments because we, we we definitely would like to stay connected with you. Um, yeah. I'm not sure where you're based out of, but um, that would be good to know too. I love it. We're building partnerships right right on air. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned voting earlier, uh, and and our audience might be a little curious about how it works. By the way, a uh, veg fund loves to to see that activists are kind of building a little bit of evaluation into their activity so that they can learn what works best and then repeat the the success and expand on it. So I love I love that thinking. Uh, but it's also voting is fun. It's fun for the restaurant goers, right? Do you want to talk a little bit about how the voting works? Yes, yes. It's very important, again, for a tool of measure measurement um, to, to understand how we're successful. It's really simple. We just ask uh, the restaurant goers what restaurant you went to and what was the best dish or dessert. It's, it's really simple. Um, I know they probably went to a ton, but there's going to be that one. So it can't be everybody. Like what was the best dish and dessert and put that restaurant name, select it and put the dish in. And that's, that's how we vote on, on who's <laughs> the winner of the best dish <laughs> and the best dessert, you know, and uh, any other feedback they want to provide, it, it'd be great, but it's really that simple. Yeah. Uh, Sam, did you want to add anything before I follow um, up? Um, just that we, uh, throughout the event, uh, we are constantly posting and asking people um, how their experiences are going. We ask them to share, to tag us so that we can talk about it. We can see the food that they're eating so that we can share that with the public um, and everyone else that's interested. Um, and we're constantly asking how we can provide a better vegan week for the public you know, what they want, what they're looking for, um, how could we enhance the experience that they're having? Um, because, you know, we're doing a ton of stuff and we're trying to, you know, grow and get as many restaurants on as possible. Um, but we want to make the experience beyond the delicious food, um, you know, super exciting and fun for people to participate in. That's Feedback great. is important because it being a restaurateur, I know we 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 hate reviews, but without the reviews, you can't get the feedback. So it goes the same with events. No one's perfect. We're still learning. We're still new to this, and we're still growing. Uh, so everything is appreciated. Feedback, suggestions, all of that, and, and we're going to try to work our best to um, uh, accommodate as many people and restaurants as we can. Yeah, speaking of feedback, Alyssa says, Naja, Sam, and Maryland Vegan Restaurant Week 
helped inspire me to co-found the first ever Southern Maryland Vegan Restaurant Week in 2019, and it was a massive success. Collaboration, outreach, and perseverance absolutely works. Big thanks, ladies, and congrats on all of your continuing success. Yay. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You know, influencing because we need more vegan restaurant weeks. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Alyssa. We appreciate um, uh, your feedback and your comment. Yes, I had to do a presentation not too long ago this summer, and I found out that there are a lot of places doing vegan restaurant weeks. When we first started out and did the research, no one. I just found the UK doing one for Veganuary. And now you do a search, there are many areas that have started their vegan restaurant week. So that that's just amazing. And we just need to keep it going. That's right. That's right. Because it started it started as Baltimore Vegan Restaurant Week and expand at one week. And now it's more than one week. And it's Maryland Vegan Restaurant Week. And and we can talk a little later about where, where it's going next. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> well. I can tell you, Jane uh, had us on Jane Village Mitchell of Jane and Chain, and she said, "What about a U.S. vet, uh, U.S. vegan restaurant?" National. Week? I said, "We can do it. We need the resources." So, vet yeah. fund. <laughs> Go ahead. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's so exciting. Um, yeah. So, I guess that brings me to to conversation about. What trends are you seeing? Uh, you know, in your feedback, you've and you can talk a little bit about specific feedback you've gotten, um, uh, special special comments you remember. But it seems like most people they want more, right? Yeah, they, see, they, you they just want more. right out of my mouth is that they want more, um, more restaurants, different dishes. You can never uh, run out of dishes. They want different dishes different cuisines. Some people are not into the mock meats. As a matter of fact, me and Sam was just talking about that before we came on. They go to her for mock meats. Lana and Kush, they're complaining about mock meats. So we got to be more plant for. So it's people want different things, want more raw, more alkali. So it's it's just so much. There's just so many, so, so much depth and dimensions to this that, um, hey, we have more options than than anything out there you know, any animal product. So vegan is the way to go. <laughs> and for us, uh, we had uh, 45 participating restaurants. Between 45 restaurants, you can kind of find the things that work for you. But it's a lot of options, you know, and it's across all types of cuisines. So it's really just like, a smorgasbord of plant-based cities. <laughs> we need more. That's the thing. Let's get to 100. 100 <laughs> restaurants, and then you're mm -hmm. really talking. And you, you, you know, you can't complain at that point. But there are sure. just so many options right now. We, we, yeah. we, we're just scratching the ground. We haven't even covered most of the counties in America. We're working our way through. So we do have a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, we've talked before, you know, in preparation for the story. And one thing that came up was that one way to encourage restaurants to participate is that uh, there's room in the market, right? It's not, there's not one way to be vegan, right? There's, there might be a gap for raw vegan or, or a specific cultural cuisine that, that hasn't been made vegan yet in their, in that community. Um, there's room in the market. Um, so yeah, how do you, how, what are what are some tips, I guess, to to encouraging others to to join in to to find their place in the market? And um, what was the other thing I was thinking of? Yeah, and get the word out to them. Well, you know, if anyone is interested in adding plant based products, doesn't know where to start, um, has questions, we are happy to talk to any restaurateur, any person. They can uh, just email us at info at mbveganeats.com. Um, we are very happy to talk to restaurants that are interested. And, you know, we can go over your cuisine, talk about how we could easily, you know, switch some things out, easily incorporate it so that it's not stressful for, your, you know, a restaurateur. They don't have to put a lot of energy or thought into what they're doing. You just have to, the proof is in the pudding. You know, once you connect people that want to eat <laughs> with delicious food, like the rest is like smooth sailing. So for us, it's easy to do that. Um, you know, we practice this in our restaurants every day um, and we work with a lot of other restaurants. 
helping connect them to providers, purveyors. It's a piece of cake. We can. I am. I'm. <laughs> there is a hurricane above us right now. It's very oh loud. So sorry about that. <laughs> oh my. Some great follow-up questions here. We've got one from Max first. Um, we're, and, and I know you have an answer to this one, a great one. Uh, yes. Were y'all able to get influencers, elected officials, or other thought leaders to participate? Do y'all want to talk about this story? Influencers are very important because they're the ones that are going to motivate people to come out and they're going to post the stories and post the food. Um, you know, from the Land and Kush standpoint, elected officials, we've had the mayor come out uh, for special events, uh, Thorpe leaders, we're talking about media persons. Mer Midday Maryland is a uh, media sponsor for Maryland Vegan Restaurant Week. So Elsa M does a great job. She's also plant-based. She goes out and promotes the campaign uh, You know, when, in the summer and the winter. Yes, definitely. Influencers, uh, continuing communications with elected officials and people that are in the public eye. Absolutely. Very, very influential. Yeah. We, and we, couldn't, we couldn't do what we do to the degree of success that it happens um, without influencers getting involved. People are hungry. They eat with their eyes first. So like when we have influencers, you know, part of our campaign is we send influencers out to these restaurants so that they can experience the food and beverage that they have, uh, you know, their special menu for vegan week. And then they post about it for that entire month. So for restaurants that are out there that are thinking about it, I mean, that is something for us that, you know, you can't put a price on that. I mean, for us, participation for us is sliding scale. You can pay as little as $29. You know, that money goes to help us pay our team and our marketing people. Uh, pay for radio, pay for TV, pay for signage and billboards. But uh, but yeah, I mean, something like that where for a month people are seeing visions, whatever your vegan vision is, that is what is going out on those airwaves and sharing with people um, across the world. We, we <laughs> just, and it's to talk about influencers, people are coming to us now. Now we have, uh, you know, radio station personalities that are wanting to promote the Vegan Restaurant Week. So and it just keeps coming. You can never uh, have enough influencers and people in the public eye promoting and pushing this message. Yeah, and Veg Fund is super interested in promoting your message now too. Sure, <laughs> I, we love it. <laughs> and and you had mentioned Naja that um, there was a now the restaurants approach you to to register as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, so we, we understand in Baltimore that Matthew uh, Kenny opened up Leora and Double Zero and we received an email asking when was the next vegan restaurant week they were ready to sign up. So it, it's always great when you're approached to find out uh, when the next vegan restaurant week is going to be. It's a, it's a great time all the time. <laughs> so uh Thinking back to square one, because we've got a great question from Evelyn here, which by the way is my favorite name, Evelyn. <laughs> um, but uh, they're asking, how do you approach the restaurants to participate? And I would add by extension, like you you got news media interested as well. Like how did you approach all of these people? Uh, question is by email, by phone, uh, for the non-vegetarian restaurants, do you provide recipe suggestions or do they come up with the vegan dishes themselves? Okay, Sam, I'll take the approach and you can take the recipe suggestions. Uh, so the, the, the restaurants, when we first started, it was we're walking right into your door because we, we had it was just Baltimore. So it was restaurants we knew. I knew a lot of restaurateurs. So I would just go talk to people, sell them onto the idea. We had a, uh, um, what is it, a digital, what is it, a package, a postcard package that explained what we were trying to do, why we were trying to do it. And that's how we signed people up. So it was face to face initially. Uh, obviously, as we're trying to get to more restaurants, we went as far as sending out 300 and some odd postcards to restaurants in the entire mm -hmm. state of Maryland and getting mm -hmm. emails and making calls and social media DMs. So we do all of that, Facebook, Instagram. Um, yeah, that, that is the work because if the people don't know what you're doing, then you know, you're not gonna have participants. But we, we do all of that. 
Yeah, and on, as far as restaurants are concerned, you never really know what platform is going to be easy for them to communicate with you. And so we try to do it across all platforms, like Naja was saying, so that we can hopefully have a little made baby lightning strike somewhere <laughs> in there. We can connect with somebody who is interested in hearing more information. Um, for non-vegan restaurants, I mean, I think people, I think most chefs, most restaurants clearly understand what is happening. You know, we see it, it's happening everywhere. You know, when you see news stories about Kentucky Fried Chicken doing plant-based food, um, you know, Burger King, like all of these major chains moving in this direction. I mean, the writing's on the wall, right? It's been on the wall for a long time. And I still think that restaurants have an understanding of that. And, and each restaurant is generally unique to them and what they do. So we try to give as much space as possible to people um, to sort of, you know, find their own, find their own way. You know, um, we always, when we reach out to people, we always offer, if you have any questions, if you need help, you know, uh, making a connection to somebody or to get a certain thing that you're looking for, um, we're happy to help. We have people that can help you with menus. We have people that, um, can bring you samples. Like you tell us what we need. We're happy to assist. How can we make it work? And overwhelmingly, they've all been really great. Um, we actually, a couple years ago, pre-COVID, had a uh, Vegan Week Expo. And it was for all restaurant, any restaurant, any person in the restaurant, managers, owners, whatever, anybody that was interested in providing vegan food for Vegan Week could come and just taste all this food and hang out with us um, and talk about the magic of Vegan Week. And um, we had a huge turnout of some restaurants that participated and some that didn't. But from that, we were able to connect a lot of small micro businesses, sort of cottage businesses that are making plant-based products to restaurateurs that needed, that they could fulfill their needs, you know, whether it was uh, vegan uh, mock meats, uh, desserts, uh, cheese, plant-based cheeses, all of those things. And so that has really helped those businesses grow as well as had our, you know, these restaurants continue to grow their options and availability on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. That's such well, a great idea. Yeah, Patrick. Oh, I was just thinking like how fortunate these restaurants are to have you to sort of like be that sort of educator and connector. I mean, I can imagine that a lot of restaurants might be out there not connecting and feeling kind of alone and on their own and having you kind of reach out to them like this is amazing. Yeah, I think exactly. that, um, as a restaurateur, right? You're just like, I gotta pay the rent. I gotta, you know, you're like, you're educating your staff. And now in COVID, you're like, I gotta keep everybody safe. You know, there's so much to do. And for Naja and I, we're just like, well, how can we help? What, how can we take some of the work out of what you're doing? How can we bring more diners to you? You know, you tell us what you need and we'll get it for you. You know, we can connect you to that. Um, and you know, opening up this whole other avenue, this channel for hungry, plant-based, or veg-curious uh, people to connect to these places, a lot of new spaces. Um, there are a lot of these places in town that have been here forever. And a lot of vegans, when they talk back and forth on like the vegan forums are like, oh my God, I had no idea. Like I can right. eat so much. I can eat so much there. I had no idea they've had this, you know? Right. And, so it's wonderful. I love I love reading that. You know, I feel like a, a very celebratory fly on the wall when I get to like read over the vegan forums and they're like, oh, did you hit this place? And did you try that? It makes me happy. Yeah, that's one of the win, 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 wins I was talking about, right? It's good for small businesses. It's good for vegan eaters. It's good for vegan restaurants. It's good for the non-vegan restaurants to join this wonderful market. It's, um, and I think another secret of your, of your secret sauce is that, um, You've created a, such an in, inclusive, uh, in, inclusive. I don't know. Want to say if it's a community or inclusive event, but uh, it's for everybody. Everyone can join. I'm so glad you said that, Estella, because it is for everyone. I know when we first started this, uh, vegans thought it was just for them. No, this is a great treat for everyone, vegan or not. And we we got to understand that the vegan. Um, population is still in the minority and we have a majority of people we still need to reach. So <laughs> lots of work to be done there. 
Yeah. And I love um, I love that in the comments here, people are helping each other and pointing to resources to each other. So thank you all for doing that. Um, uh, let's see, we've got an interesting question here. I think you talked about this earlier, but, but Evelyn's asking, do you ask the restaurants to offer a discount on the vegan specials during vegan week promotion? It's it's not a request because I can tell you laying the cush right now. We don't always, and especially now with COVID, we don't always offer uh, specials um, in terms of pricing or discount. So again, there it, it's a couple of things here. We're trying to get new people in to try vegan options. So you know whether it's a special or not, it's something you're going to take your family out to try something new. Uh, and there will be other restaurants that may offer discounts on their menu. So it is not a requirement. The requirement is you need to be promoting a plant-based option on your menu. A lot of restaurants offer new options. Some restaurants offer new and discounted options. So definitely not a requirement if you want to add on to that, Sam. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, in our pitch email, we do ask people to consider uh, the socioeconomic variables that exist uh, specifically within Baltimore City um, and that they, you know, price those things accordingly um, and that we look for things that are, you know, within a margin. Um, so we ask we ask restaurants to practice fairness, but obviously for for us and especially where we're really trying to convince non vegan restaurants to participate. We don't add, you know, we don't add the pressure of also doing it at a discount because I think what really matters is that they are participating, that they are offering plant based goods, that they're doing this for three weeks. Um, we know that it's a big sacrifice. It takes a lot of mental energy to add this whole other way of thinking about the food that you're making um, into incorporate that into your your work life, um, you know, into a restaurant that you've been running in a completely other way. So we feel like when restaurants see the response from plant-based diners they are certainly incentivized by that enthusiasm i mean we're all in this business to make people happy you know we want people to have uh delicious food experiences we want to build regulars we really um we're about relationships right so when restaurants see that is happening organically through just them participating in this event I think that that incentivizes them to have more items. It incentivizes them to figure out how to keep those items on their menus. And the discounts will come eventually. <laughs> but getting more people on board is is really, it was really our goal. Yeah, those are good tips. Yeah, from someone who knows who's been in the restaurant biz for so many years. Thank you. Um, we have a really great question from also here. I'll try to summarize it as best I can. but. Um, it's about community mobilization being important for those who are in countries where they are the first to opt for the vegan or animal rights lifestyle. And the question at the end is what what to do in order to have a restaurant and food that meets the standards? Okay. So you just want to have beans, if I understand the question correctly, what do you want? on the menu? Is it beans, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains? To adopt the vegan lifestyle, it really is as simple as that to start. Mm -hmm. You know, it, when, you, when you're working with individuals, the first thing I ask them is what do you normally eat? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And what can we do to veganize that? So to adopt the vegan lifestyle, we start like that. You eat eggs, can we try tofu scramble? Or just egg if that's in your area, your distribution area. So it really is as simple as that. And again, we're just asking people to, to try. Sometimes when we're saying adopt a vegan lifestyle, it's like, okay, and you need to do all of this tomorrow and it kind of scares everyone off. We can't approach it like that. Let's start meal by meal. Everyone's not gonna watch the documentary and go vegan the next day or the next hour. <laughs> One thing at a time. So that that's my my uh, suggestion for that. We're meeting people where they are at the Black Veg Society and we're not judging anyone. Um, we're just meeting them where they are on their journey. 100%, I think too, Education is a really important piece. If you're trying to transition 
people that are not currently plant-based, um, educating people about what that means, how restaurants can uh, provide both things to places uh, for people that avoid cross-contamination, the importance, like the sanctity of the food that we eat, right? When people choose to eat plant-based, whatever their reasons are, we need to honor those things. We need to have separate cooking equipment. We really need to make sure that these things don't cross-contaminate or touch and that everything is handled in a way that is respectful uh, to the food that they are eating and to the person that is dining. So a lot of that is just education, you know, educating our staff, educating owners, educating people about what we mean when we say plant-based. And if you're trying to start something entirely plant-based, yes, what is available to you, just make it taste good. <laughs> what, what about yes. recipes? What about, what about recipes? So like, do you have that, anything you share with restaurants? Like if they want to try something specific or they want to like switch from one thing to another thing? Oh, I'm sure. You know, I've never had an. Uh, I've never had a restaurant no. ask. Never um, ask. <laughs> we I, they never ask. I, I will say though that we have a provider a purveyor um, that's going through a transition um, out of their wholesale and sort of more into retail. Their focus is switching um, because they're going to be doing wholesale out of like a a major prime vendor, and so they're not going to do it themselves anymore. And so during this transition, some of us have lost our lifeline, you know, how we were getting some of these plant-based products. And so myself and another restaurateur were like chit-chatting and I was like, well, I got a really good vegan blue cheese recipe. If you got that vegan Caesar recipe, because I can't get it. Mm. <laughs> so we definitely like talk shop That's and trade so recipes. Cool. Yeah, independently for sure. Um, but I've never had anybody email me asking me about those things, not yet, but would be more than happy to work with anyone that had questions about how they could sort of supplement or transform things that they were already doing and turning them into, you know, fully veganized or, or, or plant based. And I think the partners that we work with, if you go to the website at uh, mdveganeats.com, uh, we have Default Veg on there. We have uh, Meatless Monday. They have guides and resources for restaurants that are looking for uh, assistance and transitioning as well. So that, that definitely helps to have yeah. partners that are already in that space trying to transition institutions and restaurants, schools, and, and hospitals to default to veg, or even if it's a simple meatless Monday implementation, here's a guide. So interesting. So they haven't asked you specifically for recipes, but uh, are there other challenges that people have come to you asking about or challenges you faced yourself on this journey? Yeah, uh, well, during COVID, uh, the number one challenge <laughs> is staffing because a lot of restaurants don't sign up because they don't have enough staffing. They know when this time comes around, they're going to get slammed. And I've heard the term that uh, some restaurants use, we got our butt handed to us. So you have to be ready when you sign up because once people come out, they're going to want you to deliver. So sometimes that deters restaurants from signing up because of the, 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 the major demand and probably the lack of staffing and resources to meet yeah. that demand. I mean, we go through it at Land and Kush all the time. Mm -hmm. There's been all kinds of supply issues, especially with COVID. Um, staffing, supply, I mean, I would say like on a, a more, on a more tangible sort of side, there's those, there's those things. Other challenges that we faced are certainly sort of like people's old ideas about what is good and what foods they like. You know, I had a chef um, who has a cookbook out and has several restaurants and, you know, um, and it's like uh, just a, a local guy, but he, when I talked to him about participating in Vegan Week, he was like, you know, I just don't really enjoy making food like that. And I was like, food like that? I was like, do you like vegetables? Like, do you, any of the things that you eat that are accidentally vegan, like mm -hmm. most of the food on your menu is vegan, except like, you know, there's a few things that it's like butter. I was like, let me get you some samples, you know? And so now he has an impossible burger on his menu, you know? And he wow. uses a plant And that's a tea. start. That is a, a start. start. <laughs> it's, something. it's something, but I think that, you know, 
yeah, I think that that is something that's challenging for us in general because there's these old sort of like old ideas um, about what they people have these misconceptions about what plant based eating is, and so that's like a major thing for us is to make sure that our 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 event really exemplifies what is possible you know like there's what exists and then there's what's possible and then our event is really trying to get to that place where we're like look at all these things we can do you know you're only limited by your imagination i task myself all the time when uh the vegan weeks come around summer and winter and i make sure i try at least three new restaurants on the list so even you know being vegan already and um you know, just despite what my schedule may be, I always make an effort to try a new part, especially if it's a new, okay, I have to get there. Or, um, oh, this is a different cuisine. So even I challenge myself, and that's that's all we ask. You know, whether you're new to this, challenge yourself to just go out and try a restaurant. If you're already vegan, challenge yourself and try a new participant. So, um, I mean, it, it, it's there again for everyone. And you can learn something new. I mean, I go to places and the ambiance, I look at that and I was like, oh, this is really cool. I like this place. You know, maybe we can do something like this. So it, it's, mm -hmm. it really truly is something for everyone, individual or business. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, thanks, Patrick. If anyone wants to find uh, the website, Marilyn Vegan Eats, it's in the chat, mdveganeats.com. Uh, you can link from there. Um, as we just begin to think about wrapping up, um, is there some top advice you would give and, and thinking both in our audience, there might be people who want to do their own vegan restaurant week, but there might be people who don't plan to do that, but they do want to mobilize or partner in their community. Um, what top advice would, would you give to someone like that? Just getting started. I, I I'd say step outside of your comfort zone, change your circle of influence, feel the fear and do it anyway. 100%, make connections, get out there, put yourself out there, talk to people, engage with restaurants, you know, asking people how you can help them is an interesting way to get them to work with you. <laughs> It almost always works uh, because it's like, well, how can I help you grow your business? How can I help you make this happen? Um, and people are really into that. I mean, as a as a business owner, I need help. We have to have our team. You know, we have to have people that are interested in making things happen. A lot of times, if you're asking somebody to make a change um, in what they are already doing, if you're saying that you're going to assist with that, it's a it's a convincing argument. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So if you're in the audience, last call for questions. If you have a question for Nadja or Sam, uh, please put it in the, the chat where you are. And thanks and for having us, Estelle and Patrick. And thank you. I, mean, I have to tell everyone, Veg Fund has had Black Veg Society and, and at, at, you know, we're transitioning Black Veg Society, was Black Vegetarian Society in Maryland since 2014 with the $150 grant that we were we used to table sample. And you are awesome. We really truly appreciate your continued support and the fact that I can come and talk to you and pitch ideas and get your feedback and continued mm -hmm. support. I love it. Oh, thank you. We love working with you. You're amazing. Uh, question from Delia. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Is there a packet of information you give out to help people get organized? Wow. Um, outside of, you know, uh, the implementation guide that's uh, provided through Meatless Monday and Default Veg, nothing yet from Maryland uh, Vegan Restaurant Week, but that is an idea and a piece of feedback that we can take back with us and uh, see if we can work on that. Yeah, and that could be a physical packet or it could be a virtual packet somewhere on your website, right? Um, yeah. There's many options. Indeed. Yeah, uh, we usually provide a one sheet um, that goes out with folks, like when we email them um, to get people involved. That just sort of explains what we do and what we are and how it how it all works, um, what our expectations are, um, or you know how Restaurant Week we'd like to put it together. If you have more information, please reach out. You know, or need more information, contact us. Um, and people are usually pretty responsive through that. 
Mm, that's great. Um, well, to wrap up, I guess I want to ask if we missed anything, if there's anything that you wanted to make sure to say um, before we wrap up. And uh, I'll think, think of something while, you, while you're speaking. Yeah, I think we have a responsibility, and I'm going to speak from a vegan standpoint, uh, to introduce our non-vegan friends to this lifestyle, you know, no, no matter how challenging or difficult it is. When this time comes around, that's the time to take, you know, from Land of Kush, we give out these coupons, to take your coupon and, and spend your $5 off with a friend on their platter. Hey, just come, I got you. So that is the time to do that. We, we need to use our personal journeys and share them with our friends and family who are not vegan. And, um, you know, every little bit of contribution matters. I think that that's really important. And two, if there's anyone that is watching that is interested in participating in working on outreach, you know, we are growing. Um, we are trying to grow and change what we do so that we can grow over, you know, over the state of Maryland, into DC, into Philadelphia. I mean, these are places that um, are hungry, right? Everyone's hungry, everybody's gotta eat. So um, we wanna be able to work with different people in different areas to try to expand the restaurant we um, to offer, have more plant-based offerings and more restaurants. So if anybody is interested in working together, um, we would love to hear from you. Um, you can just email us again um, at info at Maryland Vegan Eats at mdveganeats.com. Uh, yes. Yeah. We have a follow-up question. How do I sign up for that? So you may have answered that unless they meant uh, about something else, maybe the one sheet or let us know if, if we answered your question or not. I think all um, emails going to mdveganeats.com. That's the best way to communicate uh uh, with us. So you can either go on the site and contact us or just email info at mdveganeats.com. Thank you. Um, thank you for being so generous with, with your answers in our conversation. It's been such a pleasure uh, personally for me to talk to you. And, and I want to thank everyone who asked really, really interesting questions and, and helped our conversation along as well. Uh, and with that, I'll um, hand it over to Patrick. Patrick, if you have any questions as, as we wrap up. Oh, no, no further questions, but um, I just want to thank you both so much for coming on here and doing this with us and sharing your story. It's been fantastic and I'm really so thankful. All of us have been so thankful for all that you do. We really appreciate you. And I just wanted to mention that we have a quick survey for everybody to fill out who's attended. Uh, we would love it if you could take the time. It's, it's pretty quick. Uh, just fill the survey out so that we can create more of these events, the events that you love and benefit from in the future. So I will share that. Here and teamwork chat. makes the, the, the dream work. So we couldn't do this without veg funds. So and and you you need to give grants grants out to activists and people that's doing this work. So we're all in this together. Absolutely. Uh, and one, one further thing I want to mention is that anybody who's watching this, uh, who's a grantee, uh, we'd love to feature you as well. So if you have a story you want to tell, just like kind of just reach out to us here uh, on our socials and uh, we'll see what we can do about that. Um, and beyond that, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.